What's up, people? Today, I'm going to be kicking off my DC series leading up to Justice League. I'm going to be reviewing Man of Steel coming up for you guys next. So, Man of Steel. 2013, man, Whew. I remember being in the movie theater for this one, and to be quite honest with you, there wouldn't be an HD by me without Man of Steel. I just had so much mixed emotions about this movie when I came out of there, I, I, I couldn't contain myself. I had to talk to somebody about how I felt about this movie. I mean, just the portrayal of Superman in this movie, I just had so much to say about it. I never knew that I was a Superman purist. I never knew that I was that much into Superman before I, I saw this movie. And this movie made me say, damn, you know, I gotta go back and rewatch all of those other movies just to see how I felt about those as well. And I did. Man of Steel was directed by Zack Snyder and it stars Henry Cavell as the legendary Superman. And right off the bat, people, I, I was just stunned by how they wanted to actually start this movie in Krypton and how much Krypton just reminded me of like, you know, like, like, like those Star Wars prequels with a bunch of like CG around and man, we are so far away from the Donnerverse where the, uh, the Krypton was so icy and cold. This is like lava filled and it's got Russell Crowe as Jor-El riding around on like these like these dragons everywhere man it's it's striking how different of a tone this movie has than any other superman before and that's either going to be a positive or a negative for you for me it is a very very mixed bag all kryptonians are pretty much born in these test tubes and there hasn't been a natural birth for ages and because of that their race is dying it is literally like the fall of rome and jor-el actually creates first natural birth in ages with kal-el or superman it is a stark difference from the uh daughter superman and that is exactly where they're going with this movie and you know it continues through into the uh, upbringing of Kal-El or Clark. And, you know, it, it's just, again, it's weird for me. Henry Cavell as Superman, just looking at him, just looking at him, you can see that they are going for something very different here. This is a more masculine Superman. They want to butch him up to the point where when he actually puts on his Superman clothes, he's gonna have hair popping out of his chest. This is a masculine, manly Superman that is going to just be a, like a, almost like a brute at times. And it's just a different take for the character that even today, I am not sure if it just vibes with me. It's a weird thing, you know, Superman in this movie, he, he's very petulant. He, he's a, like a teenage kid or a person in his 20s. And even though Henry Cavell isn't in his 20s, and it is obvious, he, he acts that way in this movie. And it is an odd thing for me to watch. And even though it, it's compelling, it's just odd to see Superman go in this direction. And I, I just always am bumping up against that in this movie. Another thing that I'm bumping up against in this movie is just the rapid fire way it wants to tell you its story. And you know what? That has to do with the fact that they want to get all the way through all of his backstory and Krypton and all that stuff just so they can get to the big action scenes at the end of this movie. Because literally, that is the last hour of this movie. And I know, I know, people have been talking about that ever since the movie came out, but I can't ignore it. 
the end of this movie is just one big onslaught of product placement everywhere and just action, 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 pummeling, 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 pummeling. And I, I just feel like this, this isn't the Superman that I grew up with. And not only that, it's a betrayal of the character because I wouldn't have a problem with the Superman being a little different than how I remember him when I was a child. But at the same point in time, he still has to resemble the Superman that I've always known. You know, he has to have some part of that in him and this does not, and, and I, I just do not agree with the decisions that Superman makes here, and it is just very, very hard for me. That isn't to say that there isn't things to like about this movie. You know, I like the supporting cast here. You have Kevin Costner as Park Kent, Diane Lane as Mark Kent, you have Russell Crowe as Carell, like I have told you about, and you have my absolute favorite, Lois Lane, as Amy Adams plays her. Amy Adams is really good here and for the most part subverts that damsel in distress Lois Lane that we all know or the Margot Kidder version that uh, was that Donnerverse. Amy Adams has a warmth to her character that I feel like I really like and Lois here and I just dig that. But in spite of all of this I just feel like this movie falls short just because of the rapid fire way this movie is edited. I can't get over how fast they want to get through all of this information just to get to those action scenes that I told you about before. It kills me. I really want to like this movie, but this movie doesn't let me in. It provides you with interesting ideas. It has a lot of interesting ideas, but at the same point in time, it is just going to breeze past those ideas just to get to the next action scene, and it kills me. And the biggest example of that is the whole growing up of Clark while he's on the Fisher boat and then they go to, you know, him as a kid and his flashbacks and going back to the Fisher boat and how he goes and finds the Fortress of Solitude and how he meets Amy Adams. All of it is just rapid cut, rapid cut, rapid cut, rapid cut, rapid cut, rapid cut. But the best thing about this movie is its visuals. It has great visuals that I will talk about in great extent on the uh, 4K Blu-ray and on the Blu-ray review. And it has great audio. This movie has a great production value. And I absolutely love this Hans Zimmer score with the drums that come in, how it's a marching theme, and then at times you get to feel Clark's pain in the string instruments that come in. I definitely get a lot of Clark's pain, even with the piano scores that come in. I just feel like this score really lets you into the character a lot more than the actual film does, and I think that this is some of Hans Zimmer's best work. And for a person that like Hans Zimmer work and sometimes he leaves me a bit cold, I really like this. I could talk about Man of Steel for days, but in the end, I feel like Man of Steel is a very mixed bag that I have a lot of conflicted emotions about. I have no problem with Henry Cavill as Superman, but I have a big problem with the portrayal of Superman here. I have a big problem with the editing in this movie and the rapid cutting. I have a problem with the hour-long action scene that we have at the end of this movie and it, it, it really hampers this movie for me and for that I have to give it a 5 out of 10. It is a real, real mixed bag. <laughs> But guys, this is a very divisive movie, so I want to know what you guys think of this movie. If you disagree with me or if you agree with me, comment below and let me know. And then I'll be going even deeper into DC when I go into Batman vs Superman. You guys won't want to miss that video because you know you want to hear me talk about it. So subscribe so you know when that video comes out. And as always guys, thank you for watching my videos. You guys are great and I will see all of you next time. Yeah.